Yeah, so um, uh, this is uh, this is interesting to to see that the, the first thing I will say is that uh, uh, as uh, Marie Catherine Vosna said before, this flash is a biological effect, and 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 flash RT is not uh, directly uh, similar to uh, ultra high dose rate uh, therapy, and 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 therefore uh, uh, ultra high dose rate may trigger flash effect, but this is only may, and there are. There are, there are some specific parameters that are needed so that we can trigger the flash effect from, from high dose rate. So as uh, Marie-Catherine mentioned, this, this started from some years ago with that kind of machine. And, and as you know, um, the, uh, the, the characteristic of the flash or the high dose rate that is triggering flash is, is, uh, are the following more than uh, at least uh, 30, but preferably 100 gray per second in mean dose rate, but, and in those purposes about 10 gray. And the time for deliver for those deliveries is about uh, 100 milliseconds. Um, so that leads me directly to to answer one of the the first questions that were the, the, the reference dosimetry is a problem in the, in the, in the high dose rate because uh, there's no uh, there's no tr uh, metrological traceability and that what has been done for years uh, by Claude Bella on the team uh, was was uh, to try to have something uh, uh, some sort of stability for the dosimetry and instead of uh, of uh, having um, uh, traceability, a metrological traceability, um, the idea ha has been to uh, do redundant dosimetry with different uh, physics means for for measuring the dose. So there have been measurements with films, ionization chamber, TLD, methyl chain, and alaline, in order to uh, try to make the uh, the dosimetry uh, as precise as as possible. And 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 this is one. Uh, of the of the results that uh, have been uh, shown by uh, in the different publication, um, which is that we we can get an agreement within plus of minus three percent with all these dosimetric means. So this is the way we have uh, we have set in fact the the dose or the reference dosimetry for the um, uh, for the uh, for the high dose rate. So uh, uh, during that time, also at the beginning, with that uh, with that prototype, we have done the uh, some somehow the medical physics duty, which is the characterization of the beam profile, the beam the beam in general beam profile and, and PDDs, uh, which were also uh, published, and and uh, this is well some sort of normal uh, characterization, and that allowed us then uh, to be able to um, do biological experiment with a certain uh, uh, a confidence in uh, in those uh, and in the dose distribution so then uh, we have started a collaboration with uh, with intraop and and then we received the uh, the first hdr mobetron um, we where you you can find here the the different characteristic for the uh, hdr uh, system so we have two hdr energies and one uh, conventional energy and uh, the pulse width can be uh, adjusted between 0.5 and 4 microseconds, a pulse frequency between 10 and 9, uh, 90. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the dose control is, is, is done by redundant pulse counting uh, in, the, uh, in, in the gun and in the uh, solid state uh, modulator. Um, there are some, some uh, additional safeties. Uh, we have to go to uh, so-called physics mode that we have to activate physically so that we switch from the standard system to the HDR system. And then there's a specific console to define the pulse structure um, and then a screen uh, to define the number of pulse that we want to deliver and the, and the, and the energy. So the machine is, uh, is almost uh, the same than the, the clinical one, and it's slightly modified so that we can um, uh, deliver uh, HDR um, uh, beams. So there, there have been also factory specifications, uh, and, and the, the job, of course, of the medical physicist is to check if these specifications are correct. And this is the, the, the next part of, of my presentation, which is the commissioning of that machine. So what was expected was a dose per pulse of about 10 grade um, and a, a field size of, of about uh, five to six centimeters. So um, we started by, um, by checking the stability, not only, sorry, the short-term stability, but the, the, the short and long-term stability. And um, uh, 
uh, over a, a period of three months, we, we have a stability, a long-term stability on the output, which is less than 2% and, and for the energy about 2%, a bit lower for, a bit worse for, uh, for 10 MeV and the short-term stability is, uh, is uh, below 1%. So this is, this is a very stable machine, which is not really a surprise because this machine is, uh, is already a clinical machine, which is tuned for, for HDR. Um, the linearity with the number of pulses um, is also uh, very good. So we have done that with a pulse width of, of four microseconds, a pulse repetition frequency of 60 Hertz. And you see that the, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, very linear. This was for the, uh, for the acceptance. And, and then we have checked uh, uh, by measurement with alanine on, on films, the, the dose per pulse that we were able to obtain. So the consistency of the of these measurements between alanine and films were plus or minus two percent, and uh, you see that at just at the exit of the uh, of the machine, we were able to obtain uh, about nine gray bubbles. And when doing a gap of twenty centimeters, and I'll explain why a bit later on, uh, we we had two point five uh, gray bubbles. So these values are the one that were expected. Then uh, uh, this is a. Uh, uh, an some sort of accumulation of the of the commissioning. So, uh, of course, first of all, we've done the PDDs uh, for the open beam, and you see that the uh, that the energy or the maximum energy is related to the to the one to the nominal one uh, with a, a slightly more penetrant beam at 10 MeV. Interestingly, if you look at the 90%, uh, you will see that we can have a dose distribution or a homogeneity uh, in depth, which is about 25 uh, millimeters, 2.5 centimeters for the 10 MeV uh, beam. And we also, we also checked that the two beams, the HDR and the conventional one were, were uh, similar, which is uh, shown here. So no specific problem about that. These two beams are, are the same. Um, the field size at the exit window was the following. So um, uh, the, the dose purples was, was 8.8 .8 gray, as mentioned before. And you see that the, uh, uh, the uh, field size for the um, half value is about uh, five centimeters. If we take the 90%, we get a, a, a beam size with, which is about three centimeters. Then we also check that the, uh, the PDD uh, is not changing with the pulse width because uh, uh, obviously the pulse is not a rectangle and we were, we were curious to, to see if there was a difference uh, uh, between the, the, pulse, the pulse width and, and, and the result is that there's no difference. So this is very equivalent and, um, and this, is, this is also a good news. Um, then we, we have uh, done measurements uh, with um, collimators because at a certain point the idea is to go clinical, which means that we want to have a field size which is well defined. And these are the PDDs for the open, filed, uh, open field sorry, and, the, uh, and the different uh, collimators that may be used with the, with the machine with uh, obviously a decrease uh, of the PDD. And then we have also uh, used an air gap um, and, and see what, what was the PDD. And, and then you see that this is a PDD which is more resembling to, to the one we are used to. And, and then uh, that shows that when we are just at the exit of the machine, there's, a, uh, there's scatter and the contamination that is coming in the beam, uh, which makes the, the, the dose, the, the surface dose, a bit higher than the than the one that we would have uh, usually with, uh, with electrons. Um, the idea of going to with, with an air gap is that uh, most, of, or, or, yeah, most of the, of the uh, biological studies that have been performed were with a, 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 a dose purpose of about two gray, 1.5, two gray purpose. And the idea is that we will go clinical with such kind of, uh, of uh, of setup because we want to reproduce the flash effect. Uh, um, so that's why we, we have also uh, commissioned the machine for, uh, for an air gap. And at that depth, uh, with a 20 centimeter air gap, um, with a dose purpose of 2.5 gray, this is the, this is the uh, 
field size that we or the field that we can get and you see that the 90% is, uh, is larger and we get 5.5 centimeters uh, for, uh, for, uh, for 90 percent, uh, which is very large in fact uh, compared to, to other devices. And then uh, to finalize the commissioning, we have to make references of uh, QA, QA references so that we can follow the, um, the, um, uh, the parameters of the machine. And this has been done uh, uh, like uh, with these uh, different uh, uh, topics. And this is just, uh, uh, we just took from the uh, WPM task group 72, which is uh, the recommendation about the IGRT QA. Uh, um, IORT, sorry, not IGRT, IORT uh, QA and, and transpose to the, to the HDR uh, uh, device. So the conclusion is that uh, the dose rate is, uh, that we obtain with that machine is compatible with flash effects and beyond. Um, the field size of 5.5 or 5.7 centimeter at the 90% um, uh, at 2.5 gray per pulse, which is uh, large enough to go clinical. Uh, so our clinical commissioning is, is almost finished. We have some uh, additional measurement to perform, but this is almost done. And, and then uh, we can consider that the Mobitron is ready for the preclinical experiments and the human clinical protocols. So with that, uh, just some acknowledgements of uh, uh, particularly Patrick George, uh, Beiko Grill and, and uh, Roxanne Osterle, who did quite a lot of measurements for that, uh, uh, for that commissioning. Um, so that's it. Thank you.